The issue of homelessness is seen all over town. Really, you see it in multiple places across our state, but few places have had to confront this crisis like the man for investigator Ryan Laughlin is introducing us to tonight. And now he's hoping to force the city of Albuquerque to make some changes. When they take a dump in my driveway, that makes me angry. It's been a problem for years. You're encouraging, you're permitting, you're fostering the problem. One man hopes he can force the city to change its strategy. In other words, actually get the people off the street. They're still on the street. They're killing people on the street. And I have it on video. For another man, it's where hope died. I called me here. End of message. I would come out here in the evening and watch the sunset, the sun go down and watch the birds fly. Robert DiGiulio bought this home on 3rd Street in Albuquerque nearly two decades ago. Now he says he's trapped here. You come out here to check out what's going on, but you don't, you don't come out of here for any other reason. For years, his network of surveillance cameras has captured people hopping his fence, making a mess, and sometimes getting violent. They captured a knife fight here one time. Across from DeGiulio's home is St. Martin's, run by HopeWorks. Up and down the block are people that use the day shelter. HopeWorks receives millions in public money to help homeless people. They would not sit down for an interview for this story. Now, DeGiulio? The squeaky wheel got the grease. Is hoping to be that squeaky wheel with a lawsuit. In my mind, it's trying to force the city and St. Martin's to actually do something besides feed and clothe the homeless and leave them on the street. An extreme nuisance, his lawsuit claims, created by HopeWorks and the city, disrupts the peaceful enjoyment of his home and has damaged property value, forcing nearby businesses to close. My suit could help the homeless. It could help everybody. Well, not everybody. Man, if you met him, you guys would be buddies. I know it. That kind of, he was that kind of guy. Magpie Karpenko says Mark Levine was her best friend. He was an incredible talent with the guitar. The New York man moved to New Mexico, and then a bad divorce, Karpenko says, put him in financial ruin. He was living on the street. I lost contact with him the six months before he was murdered. The last message she got from him says, the fentanyl zombies stole my phone again. ABQ is infested with them everywhere. Then on February 28th, it's pretty dirty to come up behind somebody and cold cock them. DeGiulio's camera captures a man in a wheelchair sucker punching Levine, who hits the ground as the beating continues. For 12 agonizing minutes, Levine bleeds on the sidewalk as people all around sit, apparently, unbothered. <laughs> then first responders arrive to a place they know well. Data 4 Investigates dug up shows this part of the city is served by AFR's Station 4. They respond to much of downtown, Old Town, and the North Valley, but on this one stretch of 3rd Street Northwest between Mountain and Summer, rescuers have responded to 563 calls, a vast majority of them EMT calls since DeGiulio filed his lawsuit in 2020. Our conservative analysis shows this spot it's more than a dozen times its share of calls in Station 4's district. Whoever did this, you took away my best friend. And there needs to be justice for Marky. Jose Garcia is in jail for murder. Investigators say the manager at HopeWorks banned Garcia from the property for getting into a fight with Levine over a barking dog inside, ushering both men to the street where a beating would put Levine in the hospital for more than two weeks before dying from apparent blunt force trauma. We're the good guys, we're helping them, you know. So you're the good guys, you're you're like handing out heroin. From DeGiulio's side of the street, he sees HopeWorks as enabling more than it's helping. They're still homeless, they're still a problem for the whole neighborhood, and you can say, well, we've done our part. From New York, Karpenko holds on to an old voicemail. From a friend she'll never hear from again. End of message.
The city put out a press release about Garcia's arrest, but wouldn't talk to us about the lawsuit or safety on this stretch of road. HopeWorks didn't return any of our calls or emails, and DiGiulio's day in court is set for this fall. I'm Ryan Laughlin for Investigates. Now, Ryan actually did make contact with HopeWorks after his deadline, but still nobody commented about that lawsuit or the safety along that stretch of 3rd Street.